truth is not the absence of falsehood, but the ability to uphold a fact or belief that is accepted as true, irrespective of whose us is good. And until truth stand tall in our country, justice and a sane society will continually elude us, Nigeria and the value of truth. What is our truth? I ask these simple questions because with the COVID-19 pandemic, the past few weeks have been further exposed our deceit, lies, propaganda, and barefaced falsehood as a government and people in Nigeria. Is it with the death of the chief of staff to the president, or the lies and uncertainty about the death in Kano to the crowd at, the, at most of the barriers? But why people in Lagos were complaining about the crowd at the barrier of Sheikh Gomi, Modugoni, a reverend cleric in Meduguri last week? We kept silent in the face of the mammoth crowd and traffic in Lagos on the 4th of May, despite the state directives to the contrary. We refused to discuss refederating the country, but our state governors who had hitherto criticized previous government for deporting citizens from their state now deport Almajiris with ease. Kano State Governor chooses to relax lockdown in the midst of increasing numbers of coronavirus patients, death and chaos, yet he's neither corrected by his advisors nor criticized by Northern leaders because he's from the same place with them. And Antony General charges Fouke Akindele for violating social distance regulations but gather a crowd of journalists, much more than that of the accused, to explain his legal triumph. We are told to look the other way because as ministers in the temple of justice, we should really see evil, hear evil, but must not speak evil. What is our truth? A national assembly is confronted with a pandemic and lack of adequate legislation to deal with the situation. And rather than confront the executive to find a homegrown approach and methodology to combat the same, they must copy and paste a 1977 Singaporean law to compulsory vaccinate the people and compel them to comply, failure which they can be punished. Yet the same assembly is not channeling the same energy to create legislation that would compel actions towards finding a local vaccine stroke treatment despite the abundance of natural resources in Nigeria. A private institution spends time and money to research and create a cure for a pandemic, yet our government looked the other way because it didn't come from a foreign country. Maybe it's because of the donations coming in. An opposition party, once out of government, begins to criticize everything they once held tenaciously to as truth, while the ruling party begins to do exactly what they once condemned and criticized. Yet the willers and hailers in us will kill behind them, and we want truth. EFCC recovers and confiscates assets of so many former government officials, yet government claims to be looking for private properties to convert to isolation centers. I laugh. The president is unavailable to answer burning questions provide leadership and give answers to concise questions and a clear-cut direction in a pandemic situation apart from a pre-recorded broadcast. And we refuse to inform him that is a recipe for failure and disaster because we want to be politically correct. We divert money and palliative men for the poor in a worse situation into private use, forgetting that we might not live to spend such money. And the government is too calm to investigate same. Government issues directive and instructions on managing the crisis. Why does in government flout same sanctions, the rest of us bloodly refuse to co comply, yet we want the abatement of the pandemic. You claim to be a member of civil society organization, but displaying civility in the larger society while bashing government for simply following your step. I ask you, what's your truth? And I'm sure when all of this is over, our pastors and imams will tell their faithful to come for Thanksgiving with nairas, pounds, dollars, and euro to celebrate the defeat of the virus despite not doing anything to contribute to the cure. Foolishly, we must all go, as they say, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. We all must find our truth someday. We close our borders to become self-sufficient in food production. But in the face of a pandemic, we don't even have enough food to give to the poor. Yet we all maintain a conspiracy of silence. We copy democracy and refuse to either practice it or modify it to suit our peculiarity, yet expect to excel in it. My advocacy today would be, until we find our truth as a country and stand with it irrespective of our tribe, position, religion, or political affiliation, be it in government or out of government, because our leaders are drawn from among us, we will keep dancing in circles and pointing accusing fingers at one another, but ourselves, until we disintegrate as a country, which if care is not taken, might be sooner than expected. This is my truth. When you find yours, add it here, say it loud, stand for it and defend it, even if you stand alone. Let me just say, um, you know, there's a lot of truth in what you say. Um, however, I want to just pull back a bit and say, why 
is it that we're behaving like this? Because your truth, the truth you express, cut from the top to the bottom. So yeah. it's not like we're just saying it's a manifestation of those at the top. It, it cuts all the way through. So when you were talking, I was thinking, why are we like this? Why are we the way we are? And it's not because we're black or some strange concept. No, people are it's, because, it's because we don't have a system that puts in checks and balances. And I would even Fantastic. say, listening to what you're saying, we need to even now double up and say, we should be more harsh against those who um, do all these things in leadership because the body language for me starts at the top. So even if you're in an organization, no matter how small or a private one, even in your home, the people behind you are looking at you to see how you handle, you know, crimes and misdemeanors. If you don't do, that's what we wanted from our president. We thought yeah, that he's exactly. coming in, exactly. he's going to have a strict Point face, exactly. anybody that tries, and then he will ward off corruption. Even if he achieves just that and gets rid of Boko Haram, he has done enough. But because he has failed to do that, then everybody is running riot, doing whatever they like. So I would say, yes, a combination of we need to now look for ways to bring in stricter penalties against the elites, against those who are in leadership positions. We should go after them, you know, as though we're going after our own life because they, are, they have our lives in their hands. And then after that, we need to now recognize that what really ties people to living by truth is conscience. You have to be able to see what is right in your heart and do it. As long as you have this sense that there is relative truth and that, okay, you can get away with this, but not get it, then you let yourself off the hook and then everybody will do whatever seems right in their own eyes and everything will be falling apart around quickly, you. Exactly. Uh, so I think sorry, quickly. Okay. I am I, I'm, I'm inspired by your position most times. Or that's why I, I, I talked about this truth. You say you you're in traffic and then you see everybody shunting and you refuse to shunt but you insist that the right thing must be done and so i look at all of it and we say oh government did this but rather than correct them we keep quiet and then we follow suit we can't build a country like that yeah and then election comes you say oh uh, since they are all giving money let me collect and then i can't beat them we, if we stand together, we can, we can beat them. Of course. True. It's true that you say that, um, you know, this truth has to be collective because um, yeah. over time, there's been a lot of talks about truth being subjective. Okay. So it's about a particular individual's truth. It is my truth. Mm. It is his truth. Mm. So I won't be surprised if people come out to say, oh, that's libraries. Even in his advocacy, he said that. You come out and truth. say your own truth. But COVID-19 so, will let us live by our own truth. Everybody has to have a collective has to collectively responsibility come together, or we'll especially die. the leaders. Yeah. You know, um, his advocacy talks about, you know, the um, state government issuing directives about the easing of the lockdown, whereas we came out to it. But how how do you then get to separate the truth? Because the truth in, in that regard was the fact that no proper measure was put down, put in place. And then so the citizens came out in their numbers and disregarded yes. the other. So that is their truth. This thing, the, the, the last um, topic, again, flows into this. Um, we're talking about truth. Um, and it varies, yes, depending on how rich or how poor you are or how much power you have. Those in power have absolute power now. And so if they do anything, there's very little it looks like we can do about it. it. When um, that fellow, Adeshino, I think is his name, the, the, the press chap to the president, yes, when he says that the president's absence is a question of style and that the president does not, you know, basically saying that the president does not see any point in being around in you know being available yeah, and, and all that. to the people um, you, you you find that when somebody can say that that is the aid to a president then there's something wrong with both the aid and the president yeah. and then therefore the way the country is run but and that that's truth? why we're in trouble we're in trouble we because we can't control the narrative yeah, I mean, um, I agree with Chuka in the sense that they have a lot of power right now and it's going to be no, very, very difficult to get rid of them, um, especially as they have also hijacked our electoral system. So we can't even, you know, be sure that the person we vote for will be the person that will actually win an election. So if, until we can either change our voting system to make it more transparent so that we can be sure that the people of Nigeria, whoever they vote in, comes in. That, you know, that's, things aren't going to change. Secondly, we also need to learn how to hold our leaders accountable. Yeah. Um, 
I don't think we do that. We don't do that enough. No, and no we don't. That, we're we so don't. divided. Yeah, we're divided no. on a million and one lines. Yeah. That even when you say, oh, this one did this, somebody's quick to say, eh, but your own guy did this. Yes, they're looking at the tribal institutions. Yeah. Make a right. Yeah. So That's... I'm, I'm, you know, we have a lot to work on if yeah. we're to get to, you know, a place where we will now have a collective truth. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, like I said, if time will permit us, we all know that one characteristic of truth is that it ought to be shared. So here's where you share your truth with us about our advocacy. The conversation goes on as concern whether Africa can conquer COVID-19 with a copy and paste. Mama Pat Dutor says, brilliant conversation. Whereas Osas Ewere says, Africa is a paradise, but we haven't gotten the right leadership to make it what it is. I hope we'll get there one day. God bless Africa. Thank you. On African religion and foreign gods, part one, Cherry says the ladies need to listen to the gentlemen as they are speaking wisdom on this topic. At least a fellow woman said it, not me. Point taken, Cherry. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram, at plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plus TV africa.com forward slash the advocates. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Chuka addresses the state of the nation with some straight talk and trust Chuka shoots straight from the hip.